alongside some Marshall quarterback and greats like Byron Leftwich, like Chad Pennington. Shows you what type of leader this guy is. They'll need him for that UTSA as an excellent defense, which we'll talk more about. But Litton is clearly a key to the Marshall tap. When it's all said and done, he could top several statistical categories, and there are some good names on that list, as you mentioned. Meanwhile, the defense allowing less than 20 points per game this season, and the key for them is forcing turnovers. When they force at least one turnover, they're perfect. They're 7-0. It's a pretty amazing statistic when you look at it, Dan. Seven wins this season, they forced at least one turnover. Three losses this season, they had zero of them. You know, the Marshall defense is a chess move. I think this Marshall defense is actually even more effective than that. As UTSA will be kicking off to Marshall. Marshall with some very dangerous return men led by Keon Davis, which is why they have this high arcing kick that lands about the 35 yard line not going to give keon davis second and seven on the 44 for litton he decides to keep it crosses the 50 and picks up the first down when, when asked about chase litton doc holiday says you know he's more athletic than most people think you can see on the read option here he takes it and runs before he's taken down by marcos curry and then we can't trade touchdowns for field goals in the red zone we have to get seven here's Sturm on the play action feeling the heat and he's going down that's not going to help the cause in there real real quick was that defense led by Devon Durant you could just see the pressure coming right up the middle offensive line can't hold their blocks and then the right side of the offensive line kind of just falters on third down conversions I think they like that conversion rate a handoff, Clay stacked up at the line of scrimmage. He's not going anywhere. Probably lost a yard. Something that they have built and something that they have uh, all really been involved in for the past seven years. Good defense by Marshall there. Is it's going to be third down here. Third and four for Sturm. Quick pass to the left. That's complete, but he's not going to be going anywhere. So they're not going to be getting a touchdown on this drive. Litton back to pass, plenty of time, drops it off, and that one is complete. Obi Obialo. That's an amazing amount of time for Litton back there. Look, he has all day to pick somebody out, but it's a coverage decision that he has to stay underneath. That's actually a great job by the secondary of the Roadrunners, not to allow any free release and space. So fresh set of downs now for Marshall on the 41 the give to Davis Davis puts his head down carries a couple guys with him for six yards you have to like second effort I mean after first contact a great UTSA defense usually very good in gang tackling but pushing forward adding at least three more yards after he probably should have gone down 0 for 1 on third down so far is Marshall the handoff to Davis Davis crosses midfield and picked up the first down that's an absolutely brutal breakdown by the UTSA defense. At that point, that's a that's draw play. Look quarter. at that little handoff up the middle. Fine space and then powers forward for the final two yards for the first down. That's a backbreaker for the... That could be a morning show. <laughs> Second and seven on the 30 for the Thundering Herd. Litton with time. Man open. Pass is complete to Nick Matthews. Nick Matthews is a great story for the Thundering Herd here. He was an all-met football player outside of Washington, D.C. That's a big deal in that area. Hasn't received a ton of playing time. Had four catches on the season, and they were all last week. Corey Vedvik averaging almost 45 yards per kick on the season, just 36 yards per kick on his first two. That one caught at the 20 by Brady, and... Good coverage on the punt unit for Marshall. Really dangerous punt to, to cover as well by Brady Jones because he had two UTSA players kind of coming in on him, and uh, or rather the other way around, and you saw Marshall just being able to cover it really well. That mandatory right now for the road runs. Fakes the handoff, swings it out to the left side. That is complete to Brady Jones. Jones taken down by C.J. Revis after a two-yard game. Great wrap-up and tackle by Revis. We've seen a lot of that already in this game.
cornerbacks and safeties have come up to make plays. We have not seen broken tackles. We have not seen broken plays. We've seen very little. 15 carries for 174 yards against Texas State early in the season. And the pitch one more time. They'd like to get him going. And they got married for the second one, and then boom, he gets the father's last name for the next. And it looks like there's going to be a fake punt here. Man open, pass complete, but it's not enough for the first down. A tremendous tackle coming in there by Karam Merrill. Merrill had it read. I like the creativity. I like trying to make something happen. And yet they complete the pass, but it's short of the first down. So I love the play call. It's gutsy. That's Matt Bayless on the catch, but Merrill was there right away. Way to read what was going on there by that Marshall punt return unit. It's all about staying defensive, staying disciplined. That's all about knowing your assignment. And Best starting field position of the game so far for Marshall. Ball on the 47-yard line. Litton back to pass over the middle. That pass is complete. Nick Matthews with his second catch of the game. Marshall now has a little bit of juice, a little momentum. That open field play on the fake might have given them the type of energy they need. It looks like they're trying to go a little hurry up here as well to keep UTSA's defense on the... Here's Sturm looking to pitch. Pitch he does. And look who's there. Revis. What a tremendous couple of plays by Revis. He stays at home and look. This is a chance for him to blow up the play in the backfield, and he does. He get a good open field tackle, doesn't allow him to. So the ball's on the 14-yard line now, 40 seconds left in the half. Sturm looking to the right side in the corner of the end zone, caught, but that's out of bounds. That was a juggling catch by Josh Stewart. If he hauled it in on that first bounce, he would have had it. Chris Jackson there in coverage. Boy, that second effort nearly ended up getting it and pulling down his two feet. Third and two, handoff. He keeps it himself, and he's stacked up. Because they got to take the timeout now to kick the field goal. So another long drive ends up kind of dying a slow third, death third inside the red zone. And we've seen this now a couple timeout. of times for UTSA getting it oh so far, but unable to punch it into the end zone. Well, there's a reason we talk about the defense is it has been a defensive struggle so far. Assuming this one goes through, you're looking at six points in the entire first half of a college football game. You do not see that very often. No, especially in today's college game where all the rules like the NFL are angled towards the offense. But in this case, this is the reason that both of these defenses or both of these teams are potentially bold. After the play, personal foul. Defense, number 91. Number 91 is disqualified from the game. Wow. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. All right, here, here's another look. Here's B right in the middle. So he has a guy, he has a guy on his, oh, he kicked him. He kneed him right in the head. Yeah, it looked like that now, was kind of a pseudo here's, knee. Here's the deal, and that's what it was. It was a pseudo knee. The guy was around his ankles. He was trying to get him off. And he just kind of moved his leg up in a kicking motion. That's a, that's a tough call. I'm here with Dr. Jerry Gilbert. He is the president of Marshall University. Now, I know that you spent a lot of time at Mississippi State. You're also, um, that's also your alma mater. Very rich football history in the SEC. What did you take away from that when you were at Mississippi State and bring over to Marshall? I took away the fact that football is important to our fans and it's a very important component of the university. It's an advertising, it's a uniting factor for our alumni and we have to support our football program. Well, no richer history than Marshall and this football program. This week was the 47 year anniversary of the plane crash. I know the players, the coaching staff really instilled this rich history into the players. How did you guys honor that team? Every year we have a fountain, memorial fountain, that we turn off on the anniversary at noon, and it's a very symbolic and also a very meaningful ceremony where we come together as a community to pay tribute to the 75 that passed away in that plane crash. And it was 
a very uniting and a very moving ceremony. Coach Doc Holliday said so many people from the community came out, thousands of people he thought. His players went up to the cemetery to visit those that they couldn't identify in the plane crash. What does that mean to the community? It really gives the community a sense of bringing together the football program with the community, and they have a sense that we're in it together and that we're carrying on and playing these games for those people that perished in that plane crash. I know a lot of people learned about this plane crash from the movie We Are Marshall just a couple years ago. It was really memorialized through that movie. How did that change the way people view the football program? Well, I think it really uh, gave us a um, media that we can use to get the name of Marshall out there. I go all over the country. In fact, all over the world, I was in India. People came up to me, we are Marshall in India. And I mean, that's amazing. Amazing. And we have actually people watching tonight on this broadcast from Afghanistan, from North Korea, maybe even from India, right? Last question for you here. I know you turned off the fountain. Why do you turn off the fountain? We turn off the fountain. It's the symbolic of the plane crash and the people perish. And then we turn it back on in the spring to show that there's rebirth and a carrying on of the program. Dr. Jerry Gilbert, thank you so much for the time. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, he's the guy that clogs up that middle that brings the double teams. 6 7 280 as Ryan B as Clay's hit in the backfield by Marcus Marquise Couch. What a great play by Couch coming off of the end, sheds his blocker, comes in, makes the tackle in the backfield, immediately stops. Important conversion there. So first and ten right in the middle of the field on the 50-yard line. They give to Rhodes, or Clay rather, and he may have lost one on that carry. They're only giving up 121 yards per game. So uh, to your point, very hard team to run on there as the inside handoff to Kerry Thomas. They fake one way and then come the other direction. Now just solid sound defense there by Marshall. Third and eight here, they're four for 10 on third down conversions. Sturm has three wide receivers to his right. He's pressured, has to tuck it and run. That's not gonna be anywhere near enough for the first no, down, probably a smart decision. He just didn't see anybody open downfield. There are going to be some fans that in 2017 don't like a football game that doesn't look like a Madden video game, where it's not throws downfield or whatnot. I love this because it's six feet, 205 pounds. Plays a lot bigger than that, though. There's the handoff. That's Clay. And Look they're saying there's a fumble on the ground. Marshall's saying they have it. This would be brutal for the Roadrunners if they cough it up, and I think they did. Look at that. Another crushing turnover. Now, Marshall gets that first, first turnover. They have not lost a game where they've created a turnover. They're still minus one in the turnover ratio, but that is brutal. Your minimum getting out of there with a 9 nothing lead, and Marshall's offense have been able to do nothing. Jaquan Yuli, the man who recovered the ball, there was a big paw that got in there. I'd like to see who caused it. May have been Larry Aaron. Might have been Revis as well. Looked like he was in the middle of things, and he's had a big game defensively, but that is just a brutal brutal moment because at that point Clay yet but getting pretty close here in the third quarter they need to make something happen offensively Litton pass complete first down for Marshall what a catch there with coverage draped all over him that was Willie Johnson Austin Jupe right on his back Johnson still makes the catch Johnson does a great job here of shielding with his body the ball from the defensive back converted just two first downs this entire game Litton with a little shoulder wiggle close to the first down, breaks a tackle, and he has it. That's Obialo. That was a big play for Marshall. Obialo again does what Johnson did a couple plays earlier and just beats his man to the outside, and Litton's able to find him. Those two throws might change up Marshall's game plan here because they have not been able to move the football with any consistency all night long. They do so on a couple of third down conversions. If I'm Doc Holliday, since early October, in fact, only once all season they've scored less than 20 points. That was in a win. The fact that they're, sc they're scoreless, they're shut out after three quarters, is such a testament to the Roadrunners' defense. This is so impressive. Malik Grandin there on the stop for Marshall there. 
Stern pass complete. Thomas, ball's knocked out. Question is, was it a catch or not? Because if it was, he's going the distance, but they're ruling it incomplete on the field. In a moment. Yeah, Doc hasn't felt good about the officiating tonight, but this one they got right. This is the bread basket. I don't think he ever has control. Well, maybe he did. He, he had the ball. It's just a question of how many steps he got down. Doesn't gonna... matter now. Moot point. Stern feels a pressure. What a play. Eludes the tackle. Has a man. Can't complete the pass. But the fact he just doesn't get sacked on that is a victory in itself as they're going to be forced to punt. Now Marshall returns it for what looked look like a touchdown. But here it is again. Is that a football move? Is that possession? It's right on the border. Seeing it again, I kind of feel like it is. Catch. That was a little fast, but he makes right as he's making that second step, I feel like the ball is poked out. The key is that second step. The key is, does he take a step with possession of the football? Any way to slow that down, fellas, in the truck? I think the opposite side gives us a little bit better of a viewpoint and in super slow motion. One, two, ball poked out. Is he also shifting the ball from Litton has done a pretty good job outside of a couple of games taking care of the ball. The one thing with Litton is when it goes bad is he goes downfield and the pass is complete. The Biggest play of the game for Marshall. When they needed one, Obialo comes up huge. Obialo had been open a couple of other plays, and Litton did not look downfield. He's been looking underneath, and instead right there he goes deep. What a throw. Look at the accuracy on this throw. Look at the pass. Look at the catch. That's a huge play, the biggest offensive play we've seen all game long, and maybe that gets a list of several SEC schools who are looking for new head coaches trying to get UTSA back to their second bowl game in as many years as Winnegan bounces this to the outside balls on the ground and goes out of bounds so that's a break for the Roadrunners there nope. Sturm gonna call his own number and he's not going anywhere that is what you call form tackling met almost immediately by Malik Grant Grant to the rest of this defense and thundering herd as we've said been so good in wrapping up so so on to attempt the field goal is Jared Sackett and the snap was fumbled and that is going to be potentially a huge turn of events you can see the UTSA fans wondering what on earth happened there well, forget potentially, that is a huge turn of events because no matter what, that keeps that at a one-possession game. Kick a chip shot field goal there, snap, spot, hold, kick, and you lead by nine points. There's no way one touchdown can beat you. Yanni Roots is the punter, functions as the holder on this plate. This is a very young offensive line, three redshirt freshmen and a sophomore starting on this O-line. Third and nine from their own 27. Litton, time, fires complete, and that's a first down for Marshall. Boy, did they need that. That's Obi Obialo, Obi Obialo one more time. Obi Obialo has been the threat in the vertical game, the passing game for Marshall. It was a deep play a couple of drives earlier there. It's a simple pattern, get to the sticks, get down. So they're without their two best wide receivers on one of the most crucial drives of the season. Litton over the middle, blanketed in coverage, but that pass is caught by Obialo. It's a great play by Obialo again, in traffic, being able to hold on to it, come down with it. Defender draped all over his back and instead comes down and makes it a much more decent, much more manageable, rather, third down. So four for nine on third down conversions. Third and three here from the 44. Litton swings to his right, pass complete, first down. Boy, did they need that. Heilig Foster converted. Yeah, as a senior, you can just kind of see him get into a little bit of space on the far sideline, and it was a good find by Litton to, to get him right as he's kind of diving out of bounds. Again, this is the best I think we've seen Marshall's offense run all, all game. Now keep in mind, they're using guys, Heilig Foster, one catch all season coming in. They're using guys who haven't seen a lot of playing time, so that could be a factor on this drive. 
Litton dumps it off to his running back, Keon Davis. Davis with room, so dangerous in the open field. Inside the 20 yard line, Marshall on the move. A 30 yard gain for Keon Davis before he's finally taken down by Austin Jupe and Carl Austin. What a check down by Litton. He wants to go downfield. His eyes are downfield. Instead, he takes what the defense gives him. And then look at the second effort by Davis to drive the pile and carry tacklers. That's an aggressive run. That's a power run at the end. It's a great job by Litton checking down and Marshall's in business. Climbing the career passing list at Marshall is showing his veteran savvy here. Litton looking to the right side, has a man in the end zone, caught, is he inbounds? He is! Touchdown Marshall, that's Heilig Foster, his third catch of the season goes for a touchdown. What a catch by Foster, and this is exactly worst case scenario for the Roadrunners. They botched that field goal, they would have been up by two scores. Marshall comes down the field and scores the only touchdown of the day to take the lead. What a catch by Foster, corner of the end zone, getting the feet in. He really had two feet in. Hit the upright and bounced through. Here's Litton, beautiful pass, under pressure, complete to Foster. Nate Gaines, the senior, was there in coverage. And look at Litton stand in there, take a hit, and deliver the football to the only place his receiver could get it.